Yeah. Welcome back to the Be Light Podcast. It's your boy K Sloan, and I'm here with my boy Jay Jones. What's good with you? Man, it's been a minute. It's been an hour. It's been an hour, but it's also yeah. been it's been a little hiatus. We've been out of the out of the mix a little bit, so we catching the wave. The teaching train and caught your boy and smacked me in my face. So we we getting back to it though. You know what I'm saying? Educating the youth and trying yeah. to. Hey, do what we got to do for the people, too, man. And we got a special guest with us. Special guest. Special guest. I'll let him introduce himself. Yeah, my name is Sid. Go by Sid the Kid. You know, uh, I got a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I'm an artist myself and a filmmaker. So I'm just happy to be on y'all podcast, be a light. I'm just trying to be there and illuminate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate that, brother. You know, it's always good. We get some quality brothers to come on here and help us spread this message. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's critical. It's critical. So, you know, we ain't going to waste no time. We're going to hop right into it. So, Jay Jones, what's good with it? Man, well, first we're going to let, you know, Shannon, you being an artist, you know, being the music, and you say you write movies and stuff. You, you want to tell people you get Instagram, Facebook, somewhere they can find your music, you know, anything. Just kind of tell people what you want them to know about you, about your music, your art. Oh, yeah, most definitely. got to get at me. Look, on Instagram, Facebook, or anything, any platform, Twitter, Snapchat, anything you can think of, it'll be at Sib the Kid. So it'll be at S-I-B-T-H-E-K-I-D-D. Or K-I-D-D. You don't want to get it confused. So at S I B. T H E T H E K I K I D. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Two Ds. D, two Ds. D. And that's what what is that right there? That's IG, that's Twitter, that's what's what we at? We at a hey, Snapchat, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. I'm talking about the whole nine. Yeah. Well on Facebook, it's me at Sib Hobbs. S I B and then Hobbs H O B B S. Okay, bet, bet. Absolutely. And you got some projects out? Yeah, most definitely. I just dropped the album called The Appetizer 3 back in May. So I have then I have uh, three videos accompanying it and some more to be on its way. Uh, the most recent is called Addiction. You can catch that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I have a film on its way called Martin and Malcolm. So, you know, there's some big things going on over here. Just, just, and just as a question, I got man. What so with the Martin and Malcolm with the film? What's that? What's that based around? What's that? What's that like? What's the overview of that? Well, it's a real player movie. It, it's it's really about the dynamic between twin brothers. Um, one of them he he just got out of jail, and he want to turn his life around. He's been he's been in the streets all his life, and he just want to find a new way on, on how he can go about life, but he really don't have a, an idea of what he can do, but he have money in order to do it. So mm -hmm. he's on that. But then on the flip side, you have his brother who has never did a, a long beard or anything like that. He, he still want to stay in the streets. So, you know, he got his own thing on, on how he want to go about life. They both kind of started off the same route, but then they starting to go like that. You mm -hmm. feel me? So the one that's still in the streets, though, he he uh, he goes through a lot of things. Like he he have most of the action scenes. He a hard head, so <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But it, it's real education on you know what people in our community can do besides just be in the streets or, you know what I'm saying, besides just play football or basketball or any sports, and also just besides doing music. You know, it, it just it plays off a, uh, a lot of that type of uh, stuff. Like, you know, it, it'll be real player, man. I feel like every black kid, especially black up-and-coming men, should be uh, watching that and, and soaking up some game. No, nah, absolutely, bro. That's crazy. We was talking about that the other day, just like how – it's like in our communities, there's a lot of up up and coming kids, the youth, they don't really know what else they can do. Um, you don't really have the mentor, you don't see nothing else. You know, everybody talks about it. You know, if you you gonna you gonna rap, you gonna sing, you gonna ball, you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much yo, you know, like what what else you gonna do to, to make it? So to show a, a film that exhibits, you know, 
somebody trying to go do something else and make something of themselves and things like that. That's that's super super cool. Super big cool. time, brother. Big time. We need that. As Shout a community. Out, brother. brother, need that. But yeah. Uh, Speaking of stuff for the community, I kind of, this is the last thing we thought of, but I wanted to kind of speak on uh, the Black Panther and how important he was to, to the community. Yeah. Oh, R. yeah. RIP. RIP. Yeah, just how important he was to the culture, to the community, how, uh, how he kind of inspired people without even. You know, we didn't even know what he was going through. And this man was doing movie after movie. I mean, Sloan, <clears throat> how many movies did he do, Sloan? Man, oh, a lot, a lot. Like, probably, like, upwards of over five or six that he did. And the roles, we talking about, uh, what, uh, Jackie yeah. Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, James Brown. You know what I'm saying? They, everybody knows Black Panther. It's like the, the power behind the roles that he was playing during the time of going through those chemotherapies and things like that it's just like bro to me it, it it shows like there's nothing that we can't accomplish you know what i'm saying like there's nothing that we truly like if we just focus on a purpose because that man obviously had a purpose like he was living out here for a reason if you got a purpose then you'll run through a wall you know what i'm saying you'll run through a wall to make that happen and see that come true and then at the end i mean look at look at what he has become in in our in our culture for sure you know what i'm saying that man is immortal now and uh, for me, dog, like my thoughts on it is, man, it just it just motivates me to like not ever think that you know it, it's is it's anything about anything else but the purpose, bro. It's the purpose. Like, what what are you really doing? What you're doing for? You know, this this bread is is. I'm sure that money that he made from those movies had no type of bearing on what he was really trying to get done. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I will let y'all touch on that a little bit. I was, but it's I think that purpose that he had. <laughs> go ahead. No, nah, you go ahead. No, nah, I think that purpose that he had through his work, bro, you just you just saw that like that was his his life's mission, and you, and you saw he got that done. That to me, that's a win, bro. Like guys like him, like we lost the Mamba this year too, but these 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 men that came and, and conquered and showed us what it looks like to to do something for a reason that's bigger than yourself, bro. That's that's the pinnacle of life. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know it's like it's like when you go out like that. That's how you go out. Like Nip, you know what I'm saying? You go out in front of your shop. You feel me? Like you did all this stuff for the hood, and then you go out. And you hate to see him go out like that early. The, all these brothers went out too early. But you almost want to say God was ready to call him home because, you know what I'm saying, look how many people they impacted. You know what I mean? Like it's like, right. man, that's, that should be what we striving to be. You know? So that's kind of how I see it. I, 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 like, I like the fact that, you know, even on the monetary game part, like if if his if his intent was to leave his kids and their kids a um, uh, 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 generational wealth, you know whether that's monetary gain or just the resources that come from it, then he was able to do that. So that's also a purpose in itself. Is just uh, you know trying to achieve goals such as that for your uh, legacy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, even even just from the aspect of you know uh, young kids looking up to him and and seeing that hey uh, this dude had so much to lose, but also he had so much to gain, and he he went in and with his glass half full because a lot of people they'll get in that position and they'll give up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it, it, yeah, he had to be very strong minded, strong willed in order to get the things done that he did. So yeah, salute to him. Absolutely, bro. And I think the thing with me is like sometimes we wake up with a headache or something, but we don't want to go to work, you know. Mm -hmm. Call out, oh, you know, or we wake up, you know, just not feeling good. Like, oh man, I just don't feel like doing that. Yeah, this man, he put all that to the side and he said, I need, to, you know, I'm getting this done. And I feel like even when he was going to, you know, see kids that, was, that had cancer mm -hmm. and everything, just everything he did, it was like he fulfilled his purpose. So I just feel like that should inspire us, you know. I know, you know, sometimes you do get sick and it is hard to get up. But, hey, if you can get up, if you can do it, man, get up and do it, man. You just, you never know when your last day is and you you need to get to, you need to fulfill that purpose. So, Absolutely. just inspire, man. That man, I was, you know, I'm not a big movie person. I did see Black Panther. I did see Jackie Robinson and stuff. I've, I've seen his movies, but the inspiration that, 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 it, that, uh, 
he gave me, you know, just for knowing what he went through and finishing all this stuff. And he was still training to do his next movies and everything. This dude just, I, I'm inspired. So. And, and, and add to what you said, Jay Jones. Oh, you about to say something? See it? Uh, no, no, I mean, uh, uh, I would say, like, uh, it also applies to, like, uh, yeah, in unison, like, R.I.P. Kobe Bryant. He, he he did the same thing. Like, when he get on that floor, and, you know, he, he going all out for this championship or whatever his goal was for that specific game, dude going to leave it all on the floor, and he going to go hard doing it. So I, I really catch inspiration from uh, people like that. That just made me uh, think of and chat with Bozeman and uh, how Kobe went about his business doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think also um, when you're talking about bringing that type of energy, bringing that type of purpose to your work, you got to be doing the right type of work. You know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes if, if you think that you can't go to work because you got, you know, a headache or you think that you can't go to work because, you know, your day yesterday was so jacked up that you don't want to come back to work the next day. If you really having those thoughts like that and you can't get over it, maybe you're not doing the right things. Maybe you need to find mm-hmm. your real purpose because when you get to that purpose, you start to fulfill it. You can bless so many people that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I think it's important that we take the time to try to focus on what we really are supposed to be doing out here. We have natural skills. We have abilities. We have things that God has blessed us to be able to do that some people can't do. So if we are blessed, we should be out here sharpening that axe. You feel me? Like and really honing in on them skills and on those professions that where people need us. And I think that's Chadwick Boseman. You know what I'm saying? Acting was his calling, obviously. You know what I'm saying? The, the impact this man has made. You know, Kobe Bryant, his calling was playing basketball. And these things could just be just jobs to some people. But for for these people, what they did was they threw their their fire and their passion and their hearts, you see that, like, man, it's like, I could do, I could bring that type of heart to the to the uh, kitchen. You feel me? As a chef. Like, I, that inspired me to turn up as a chef and, and put out different recipes that could change lives by the experience that I provide for these customers. You feel me? Like, it's all relative. I was talking to somebody the other day, bro. I feel like everything is connected, bro. We just got to find those connections and be able to, you know, learn from every single walk of life. You feel me? And I think that's what that whole Chadwick Bozeman thing, it was like, wow, like, bro, I I was going through some stuff at the time, and I think that's when it was like, I threw it out. Like, I didn't even think about it no more. I was like, bro, I ain't going through chemotherapy. <laughs> and I'm not, and I'm not, <laughs> nothing I'm doing right now is the equivalent of an Academy Award winning type situation, so. Yeah, he did that. He did that. He did that. Amen. Hey, and I, what you said about everything being connected, I, I've been, like that's that's a concept I've thought of, uh, uh, thought on a lot. I, I put a lot of thought into it. I'm actually watching a a, a show right now that's, uh, that that kind of touches on it. The show kind of get. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, down the show and them like that. But uh, anyways, just everything being connected. That it's right. I mean, if you hold the door open for somebody, it may be something real minuscule to you, but with them, they might be in their head like, man, nobody care for me, nobody, you know what I'm saying? But then when you hold that door open for them, then they, they look like, yeah, at least he was cool with me, at least he did this or something, and it may brighten their spirits for that day. Mm-hmm. Just something small, like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, so everything being connected, one thing going into the uh, another, that could save somebody's life. You never know what people have on their head. And when they feel depressed or anything like that, and they're not telling anybody, they just to themselves, then you never know what can go on. So, uh, yeah, everything is connected. One thing can lead to another. Any human being can affect the next human being, which would affect the next human being. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Smiles are contagious, too. Smile at people, y'all. Smile yeah, yeah. at people. Yeah, you, nah. show. you feel what I'm saying? You got a little yeah, show. Just let, him, let him show. I used to a have a big show. old gap in the line. I got them gap. But, uh, <laughs> he with the gap, man. He with the gap. You got some love with the gap. But uh, the next thing we want to talk about is pride. Now, Sloan and I, we talked about this the other day. But there is, you know, good pride. And then there is that bad pride, you know what I'm saying? It's a certain pride you get to a point where you don't want to like support other people. It's kind of like, nah, you know, they're doing too good. It's kind of the bad pride almost is hate. 
I would call a bad pride hating. Now, good pride is if, you know, kind of like you putting work out there, you putting pride, you putting your all, oh, kind of like we were just talking about. If I put out a CD or something, I'm not just about to pull up, pull out, put out no, you know, bad project or anything. If I put my work into it, I want it to be great. That's pride right there. So, um, what's some differences or what's some ways you can talk about good pride, bad pride? What's some ways you can, you know, think about that? So, I'm sorry, bro. My my speaker uh, had went off, man, and lost <laughs> that. I apologize, no, bro. No, you, good. You, you mind repeating that question? No, I was just saying, uh, basically, we're talking about pride period. I, we, Sloan and I talked about it the other day about like good pride and bad pride. And I was saying like good pride is if you know how you put out CDs, Shannon, you're gonna put some work into it. You're gonna make mm. sure it's your best work. You're gonna make sure people want to listen to it. You know, that's pride. It's pride behind mm. the project. But then there's also pride where you're like too prideful to to show love or to to uh to give somebody their flowers, you know, while they're alive, you know. It's kinda like you're like, oh no, nah, you know, he did all right. When somebody did some great work, you're like, man, that's all right. I can do better, you know. It's almost hate. Mm-hmm. So I was saying, like, what's some situations or just talk about, like, how you can, uh, situations with good pride, a situation with bad pride you experienced or you want to talk about? Uh, on that, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, like, because, say, like, just touching on the Kobe and, and Chad subject like as far as them having pride in their work and going as hard as they can in order to fulfill their goals you have to have a a certain amount of pride because if you don't that goes into you know how strong you are like if you're not strong willed then of course you don't have any pride about yourself because you're not proud of who you are as a person or or where you came from or and that's a that's a reason why it's good for us to know our history and everything also is because that makes you proud of uh, who you are and what you made of and that can keep you pushing along knowing that this is who I am and no matter what obstacles that I have to go through I know who I am and I know what I'm capable of so I'm able to push through any wall that presents itself in front of me now as far as being too proud some people can let that be a hindrance to them just because they feel like, well, I don't need nobody, you know, which you always need people. We just spoke on everything being connected. All of us need each other. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like a set of batteries with a, with a remote control. If you, got, if you got a remote control that need two batteries, one can't work without the other. So that's all of us being connected. So if you're too proud, you end up pushing off that other battery. How your remote gonna work? Yep. You know what I'm saying? So if you, yeah, it, it's definitely a thing of being uh, too prideful, too proud, and, and and not knowing when to kind of cut that off and be uh, be able to tell yourself the truth and have conviction about yourself. And you know what I'm saying? Things like that, like being humble, basically. If you don't have a, a certain amount of humility, then you can be too proud. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I agree with that 100 uh, percent coming from a place of somebody that actually has battled, you know, constantly. You know, I still do every day, you know, as far as with pride, because um, I think, you know, when you talk about too much pride and I guess just enough or the, the pride that you can digest, other people can digest. You're talking about when like for me, when I get into a situation where it's like. I feel like I'm begging you, right? I, I feel like it, no. If I gotta beg you, I'm. It's not supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. I don't beg people for things. I have. A, I have a very, um, I guess, prideful take on asking for things sometimes. And I know that I got to get better at that. You know, it's it's because growing up, I always was like, man, I can figure out a way to do this by myself. Like you know, y'all don't have to come over here and help me out. Like I got it. I can do this. So it's like. As an adult, I had to understand that that is crippling me in ways. You feel me? Like, I had to understand that this is something that I cannot continue to hold on to. It, it will stifle my career. Like, it'll, it'll start to make me uh, less effective. It'll make me, uh, I guess, a little resentful. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll end up almost having hate for other people if I'm too prideful. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking, oh, why he got that? But... He got that. That's his business, one, number one. And two, 
Yeah. It's like most people that are doing really well. I was listening to uh Jay Z uh not too long ago. I was listening to a YouTube video. Jay Z was talking and he was saying like I'm a master collaborator. You know what I'm saying? He's like he like I I, I I consider myself a master collaborator. And he's like, what do you mean? And he was like, because nothing hurts my feelings like that and I work with anybody. He was saying like, you know, he doesn't pick fights. He go to the club, somebody step on his shoe or he step on somebody else's shoe, he'll tell him sorry. You know what I'm saying? And in New York culture, that ain't normal. You know what I'm saying? New York, it's like, hey, 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 yo, Joe B. Like, you know what I'm saying? They coming <laughs> like that. But he was yeah. saying like, I'm I'm real cool and I try to keep everything, you know, copacetic. You feel what I'm saying? And like, when I was listening to that, I was like, dog, I was like, Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? One of our first billionaires in our culture talking about how he a master collaborator. So if we looking at that model that Jay-Z providing, um, we can't be out here thinking that we could be the sole everything for our own little personal businesses, or our own little ventures. Like, bro, you got to come together with other people. And that, that takes sometimes to take that pride and put it somewhere else. You know what I'm right. saying? They say in the Bible, and me and Jay Jones have talked about this before, it's a sin to be pride, to have pride. It's a sin, you know? And, and when we think about that, it's like, man, so the proud, the, I think I, when I kind of analyze it in my own brain, I see it like the self-esteem, the confidence that we have in our, you know, in ourselves, the preparation, how we were raised, our morals, those should be what should be at the forefront of how we move and how we represent ourselves. But we shouldn't carry, I guess, you know, just like, okay, this is me here. Like, right. Like this is, I can do all of this. Like I got, it. I like, no, you got to humble yourself. Like you said, see, like you got to humble yourself. You can't come into every situation thinking, you know, you the, you the person like go take a back seat and listen to somebody and learn something. Show some love when somebody does something great. And you like, man, that's, that was that was awesome. Like, I'm, I'm going to tell you, like, that was amazing right. that you did that. You know what I'm saying? Show, like, give them their flowers, Jay Jones, like you said. So yeah. that's kind of how I take it on the whole pride thing. Jay Jones, let you go. My thing is, uh, with the Bible saying being, like, about pride, I think all this too, but it's like, sometimes God puts you in that situation. So it's like, when you say, I did that, did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Or did God put you in the situation? And like, you and you had a, you know, you, had, you, you put in the work. But did God give you that skill? Did God put you in that situation? So I think, like, when we get too prideful, we forget about who put us in that situation, you know? So that's big. And then, then I think, as Kerry said, being a man, first of all, you you just kind of had that pride. And then being a black man, sometimes you got that chip on your shoulder that makes you, you know, kind of super prideful or, or, or say, hey, I don't need nobody. I can do this. So just as a culture, y'all, I mean, we just got to work on that. Because I just feel like, and we come together and we work together, we can be the most powerful people on this earth. But I mean, gotta put the pride aside sometimes. So, right. And then, that's and then, my take on it. My take on it. I got this quote here. You know, I wrote down, they say, and I got a little feedback. I don't know what was going on. Stop though. But um they right. say pride is at the bottom of all great mistakes. And another one I wrote is uh we some people fight more uh for pride, then work with love. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they fight more for pride than do their work with love. So when you're talking like something that you love to do, um, that pride can get in the way of really maximizing your passion. You know what I'm saying? If you if you as an artist, you ain't gonna work with certain artists, you beef with these artists, and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I don't like what I don't like what he's talking about, this and that, and y'all both the hottest in the city. Your pride won't let you work with the hottest artists in the city to be able to move y'all out of the region, move y'all out into a national spotlight. You can't make that collaboration because you too prideful. You dwarfing yourself. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and bro, like, I, I think that's something that, like, I've really taken to heart lately, for sure. Like, because we got to be able to ditch that pride, bro. Like, I'm, I'm not, it's not all about me. You know what I'm saying? And, and I do need to take care of myself. I do need to be proud of what I do, but to bring pride into the situation where I need to probably bring some more humility, then I, if it's, if I'm looking at a situation as pride versus humility, I'm taking the humility first. I'm going to go in there humbly first, and then the pride is going to sit back there, my, and that'll be more of my self-confidence, my self-esteem, my preparation, all that stuff is going to be, you know what I'm saying, that's already there. I don't got to sit here and boast and, you know, 
be all feelings on my sleeve about how you feel about something I'm doing and all that. Like, and that ain't that ain't what it's about, bro. That ain't what it's all about. Right. You I mean, end up falling off quicker than you got on. Man, yeah. quick. Now you just swan dive. Now you broke. So yeah. you, you can't Shand- got you man. Burn bridges. Shand- Shandow, you remember we was talking about how uh Jeezy and, and Gucci could have made so much money together? Mm. Oh my yeah. god. Hottest in Atlanta. Now, now hey, see, and and that's that's Jeezy should have had enough humility not to put that bag on Gucci here, and they probably would have made that. Collab. That's true. Yeah, once you do that, it's kind of it's kind of hard to come back from like, hey, yeah. you tried to kill me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that cross. <laughs> hey, I think how do you put the bag on my head? I don't think we can ever come together now. It's kind of like even like Jay Z and Nas, they squash they little beef. You know what I'm saying? Jeezy and Ross. Jeezy and Ross was talking about how like they said they talked on the phone about like, man, we messed up. We could have made so much money to get like we both businessmen. Who was beefing? They didn't even. They don't even know what they was beefing over really. Jeezy and Ross, just, and now they cool. Right. And, you know they kind of passed their primes now, so they can make songs together now. But it's kind of like, oh yeah, that's Jeezy and Ross. But back in the day, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, but yeah, yep. Back in yeah, oh eight, oh nine days, man. man. But you looking at music now? You looking at music now, right? And you know, uh. Older cats, you know, probably a little older than us, they would say, oh, it's soft, right? It's soft. Everybody's so soft. Ain't no real beef no more, this and that. But when they collabing like this, that's why these numbers going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody tripping on working with nobody nowadays. Back then, it was like, oh, you got real beef. They battle rapping, which was cool. It was entertaining. But the battle rap, the revenue stops there. Like, it stops right there. Yeah. So you don't make no more money because y'all don't make music together anyway. Y'all the hottest, and y'all making your own separate stuff so we gotta pick and choose i was gucci all day i wasn't rocky with jeezy i had to choose <laughs> i had to choose i'm not finna be listening to both like i gotta listen to one or the other so it's like jeezy over here see? that dog had to make me listen to gucci i was like mm. nah, no, i was on that, i was on that uh Sway my dough, sway my dough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was on that damn gucci that's a classic gucci that's a classic bro so, i wouldn't yeah, like it, but, really. hey just like like the uh like the pride versus humility thing we wouldn't have swagger like us if jay-z lil wayne ti and kanye didn't just be like bro we hey we finna make this thing happen they clicked up made that happen number one on the billboard charts you know what i'm saying so that's what tell you what collaboration can do for you yeah they talk about putting that pride to the side and being like i'll hop on that track with with them i ain't I ain't scared. Nah. They, they they eat just like I eat. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Facts. And it's enough for everybody to eat. That's the thing we got to get over with. Like, oh, I can't give them a piece of my stuff. Nah, man, it's right. enough for you to eat, me to eat, he to eat. It's enough out here for everybody to eat, man. So. Bro, facts. Right. They, say, they say it's called, I was reading a Robert Greene book uh, a couple years ago. It was uh, Mastery. I think that was the title. I can't remember the exact title. But uh, he was talking about the mastermind principle. You know what I'm saying? The mastermind principle is you get masterminds. When you become a master of something, you search out other masters so y'all could come together. And if y'all have at least three of y'all, if y'all come together and create things together, then y'all are going to make one plus one equal 1,000, 1 million, 1 billion. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter because the power that y'all had within one, when y'all multiply coming together, it's infinite. It's infinite. So. Infinite. Infinite, yeah. bro. You don't know what y'all can make. You gotta just put your pride to the side, though. You can't have pride in those situations. Yes, sir. All right. Well, that's sure. good stuff about pride. So, uh, speak. I mean, this kind of ties into pride, but uh, it's knowing your worth. So, kind of like the work you put in. Don't let nobody. Uh, basically, don't let nobody play. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you didn't put in the work, you didn't. You didn't got the degrees. You didn't. You, even without degrees, if you just put in the work that made you a master in what you're doing, don't let nobody, even family, don't let yeah. nobody come and play you for your services. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if you're coaching, if you're training people, you know, uh, and your price is your price, and you earn, you 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 earn, you know, to charge that price. No, I had that one cousin come up and be like, hey, give me, hey, let me do it for five dollars. <laughs> let me get, let me get some couple free. I know you got some extra. I see you had some came here. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, I mean, real, real talk. That I was just speaking, like I, I'm talking to my girl this morning about something similar. Like I, I look on Forbes 
I'm subscribed to them. So I seen that the top grossing actors, The Rock is the first one. And mm-hmm. I was kind of surprised by that. But he, he make he made eighty seven point five million dollars and um a big chunk of it, like twenty three million dollars came from uh, his his Netflix movie that he put out I, I think this year called I, I forgot what it is. I don't want to promote his stuff. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he, he, he he got a big chunk of it from that though and she, and she was like, Why they give him all that money and you know what I'm saying? It's just a rock champ. You know, like she wasn't trying to down him or nothing like that. It's just she didn't understand. And I, I was going through his movies. I, I was like, man, he, he done been in Jumanji two times. You know what I'm saying? That grossed about seven, eight, nine hundred million dollars each movie. Then he had the 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 skyscraper movie that grossed a lot. Even that little two fairy movie, like mm-hmm. he did his thing as far as those kid movies. So once she started adding up, she was like, okay, yeah, it sound about right. I mm-hmm. like, yeah, Netflix trying to get that bag. She they see. He getting that bag, and they like, Once let me have put, some humility and put my pride to the side. He know his worth. Whatever yeah. he asking for, <laughs> give, give him it that. to you know him. <laughs> give it to him. You got to. And he you. like, I ain't backing down. He probably, mm-hmm. They probably told him, hey, we going to give you $15 million. He like, man, $25 million. And they met somewhere in the middle of 23 So yeah, pass off to him. Just that's knowing awesome. your worth. Nah, 100, 100. And I, and I want to add on that too, man. Like, you're you going to pay the rock. You're going to have to pay the rock. Because you know once you scrolling through Netflix and you see a rock movie, you're going to open to see the, what the preview, what's going on with this right here. Uh, we might even just let, watch it. You know what I'm saying? He, he's, yeah. he's one of those actors right now that, you know, if you see him in the movie, it's like a, it's almost a no-brainer to watch the movie. So he can call his price. You know what I'm saying? And, and mm-hmm. oh, we all can call our prices. I mean, in reality, we all can call our prices. I don't think that you got to be the rock to call your price. You could be Jane Doe up there at uh, FedEx. You could call your price because here's how you call it. When you get into your job and you sign that contract, you know, or or whatever, and it say what you make, you can say, okay, that ain't enough for me. And bounce. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Or if you, if you come in from another FedEx spot, and you was making a certain amount, they gotta match you. You gotta yeah. match me, or I ain't coming here, right? Like you gotta use, you gotta use what you already have to your advantage, bro. Like if you already done did your experience and you done put the work in and you show it to a spot and they're not trying to pay you what you feel like you worth, bro. They playing you to the left. And you mm-hmm. like don't don't take the 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 shiny lights and the smoke and mirrors and all the perks they talking about. If it ain't to pay, it ain't to pay. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like it ain't. Hey, I'm worth what I'm worth. So I, I, I believe yes. in that, bro. Oh, yeah. big believer. I mean, and even I mean, we talk about acting. We talk about athletics. Look at Patrick Mahomes. I mean, just everybody. These we now. I feel like we now starting to, you know, uh, negotiate. We are trying to get it. We making it our price. You know, I think at, at first. Brothers, I'm just gonna put it out there. I think black people kind of used to take if they say, "Oh, we can get you this advertisement," we, that can add to this contract. You don't have to worry about that because if you sign here, we're gonna get you. You're gonna be signed. You sign with the Dallas Cowboys, you're gonna be on 20 commercials. That'll pay you. We ain't worried about that. No. I want the yeah. Dallas Cowboys to pay me, <laughs> and then <laughs> they gonna pay me too. You know. So I think we finally starting to, uh, as the people, just I mean, as people everywhere, not just black. People, I think we are starting to know our work, and uh, I mean, some people I know you have to have a job. And I, you know, you, you, if it's McDonald's, it's McDonald's. Not knocking anything, but if it's something you don't agree with, like Gary said, if it's just something you just strongly don't agree with, walk out, and I believe you can find a way. I really do. I really do. I really yep. do. <laughs> this is a disclaimer. Don't just quit your job because Jay Joe said so. But no, 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 no. no. Make sure you don't if say not saying if that. They, they, they they quit you, job. If they treating you like. Beneath what you you know, treating you like crap, and you just right. feel like every day is depressing and is messing with your mental health and everything. That's what I'm saying. No, 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 just walk in there because yes. you, you watch the show, and you're like, You're yeah, right, I'm better than that. Knock the cash first over. I'm better than this. No, 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 no. And the best time to look for a job if you do, if you are getting treated worse, getting treated bad, the best time to look for your job is when you have a job. 
Yeah. <laughs> you can look for a replacement uh, search. Job. Search start searching today if you feel like you you know you're getting played. Yeah. Don't just yeah. quit. <laughs> yeah. you say Make your own drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, I remember when I was working in the warehouse, man. I was working at H E B distribution. And I remember, bro, it was uh my brother's graduation. He was graduating high school. And uh, my family was there, and I remember I was waking up because I, I worked overnight. So I think I slept all day the day of his graduation. I went to the graduation, but I slept most of the day. And I got up, and uh, my, my uncle was like, you know what I'm saying? He was in the kitchen, and I was getting me my lunch and stuff. And I was like, man, I hate this job. Like, I was just talking about I was talking about how much I hate it. I was like, man, I don't want to work this job. Like, it's just got enough money. Like, I'm just doing this so I can pay bills. And he was like, man. I remember I, this stuck with me for the rest of my life, bro. He was like, man, you know what? If you don't like something and, you know, you working somewhere, you really don't like it, man, you know, just change it. Like, just straight up. It's like, if you really don't, if you really don't like where you at, you don't like the situation, just change it. And, and, and yeah. I was like, I looked at him, I was like, I'm like, you don't, at, at first I was like, you don't understand. But when I went to work, it was like, it kept ringing in my head, ringing in my head, ringing in my head. And I was like, bro, I'm, I'm going to change this. Like, I, I don't, I'm not happy. So mm-hmm. after that, I did, bro, and I, and I went back to school. But um, I think it's important, man. It's just like if you if you if you really know what you, what you're supposed to be doing. And I think before you go and like let's say ditch your job, right? Make sure you're doing everything right. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause a lot of people be like, man, I don't like this job, but you show up late. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You don't do what nobody tell you to do. Uh, you 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 you're yelling at customers. You you're cussing. You you acting ignorant on the clock. Like ain't nobody nobody will want you at the. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants you working for them. Like just in reality, right now, the type of employee that you are. So I think some sometimes when you're in certain situations that you can't get out of immediately because of like bills, because of life. I think you need to learn those skills that are going to be valuable for you later. And wherever you end up being at, because like no matter what you do, bro, you this is, you gotta have some. Uh, I'm trying to get away from the word pride, right? We talked about that. <laughs> you, gotta <have laughs> some, you gotta have some type of uh, you know something about yourself that says like I'm professional. You know what I'm saying? I, I am actually somebody of value in the workplace. Like I I do things the way it's supposed to be done. Like you gotta have some of that going too now before you try to professionalism. Sit- professionalism like like look at what what are you selling us okay because because I, I was told every time you show up to a room every time you had a job uh you, you know whatever you are selling yourself you know what i'm saying what are you selling people on you know what i'm saying when i see you and your shirt all sloppy it's out your it's out your pants you got your shoes untied you know what i'm saying you got coal in your eyes what are you selling right now you know what i'm saying like what what you out here for all these people trying to sell a cheeseburger. What you what you really selling us? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, you know what I'm saying? You just you just got the car, you y'all was doing what y'all was doing. Now you come in here smelling like uh, you know what I mean? So you know, it's like, come on, bro. Like yeah. I can't I'm not if I'm a CEO, I'm not gonna hire you. Even if you my right. my family man, I gotta keep a G with you. I'm gonna be like, hey bro, we gotta clean this up. Like we can't, you know. So I think that's another side of that as well. Yeah. That's real. Yeah, that's real. But yeah, hey, that that's that do make me think of like a lot of people. They make their mistakes like they they know they worth, which is the correct thing to do. But then they don't map out a plan in order to get where they feel that they need to go. Like, uh, I feel like it's real imperative, like for people to know, like having a having a plan on. What is your destination? Because people people feel like hey, I, I I feel like I've been through this or I've been through that or I feel like I'm supposed to be doing this or be doing that. But if you ain't did it yet, then how can you say what you can or cannot do? So the world look at you like that from a from a layman's point of view of hey, I'm just looking at the road that you've already paid for paved for yourself. And I'm looking at where you headed. Now, if you do, uh, if you go this way, when I thought you was gonna go this way, then that's on me, and you you show me different. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people they end up in a position that they in for a reason. Like your your life is not a mistake. It's always where you put your what what type of what type of uh, chess pieces you put before you even uh, move the next one. 
Right, mm-hmm. right. And that's like, that goes into like with banks, right? When banks loan you money, they run your credit. When they mm-hmm. run your credit, they run your credit based on how much money that you got coming in and how much you got coming out. So right. when your credit get based on ran on that, and they also see your late payments, they also see uh, your delinquent loans, uh, other things, deferred school, all this stuff that they can see now. They basing everything off your credit, and it's what the people do in the world. It's your credit. Mm-hmm. What's your credit history? What's your life history? What you what you did already? I don't got nothing right. else to base you. I don't know you from Adam. So when you show up in my room and you ask me for a job, all I got is okay. You quit this job. Uh, they fired you for for uh, inappropriate behavior. Uh, you do mm-hmm. have you do have a felony. Unfortunately, you got a felony. Um, this 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 is our rattling off the things you got wrong, and they looking right. at it. So now it's like you're right. You need that plan. You have to know mm-hmm. what is the what are the action plans I need to repair what I've been through in regards to my my image, right? So I can create those situations where I can call my price more often than not because I have a history. <clears throat> I started to build a history through a good plan that will afford me those opportunities. Now I can tell y'all, hey, look, man, like this is my track record. Like y'all see what I mean. Right. You know what I'm saying? I walk into it, I just show you my portfolio. And really, I shouldn't have to show you. If it really speaking for itself like that, y'all found me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Y'all found exactly. me. So that's what we want to try to get to with that plan, mm-hmm. bro. Like when you create that plan, then now you start to attract those things into your life, those people into your life, those jobs into your life, that money into your life. And now it just all makes sense. That electromagnetic field that we got around our body, bodies that's literally following us everywhere we go. These jobs and these people, they feel it. It's like, oh yeah, this this brother right here, he of quality. Like I got, I know he ain't going, we ain't going to be able to just throw some nickels at cuz. Like we're going to have to really, really come out, come out of some, all right, man, look, Watch this is what you got. Like, are you, Watch your pocket. you know? Come with the quarters. <laughs> I can't come with the quarters, bro. <laughs> you can't come with no nickel and dime. You got to come with the quarters. Nah. Nice. Got to bring the bag with you. You got to bring the bag with you. You got to. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, just, I, I, everything y'all saying, I agree with. And uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, school or just mastering what you're doing, man. Just have a resume, have a portfolio, have something behind you, man. But uh, and also, as Carrie said, that's really a big point, huge point. Do your job, <laughs> get there on time. <laughs> get, there, get there on time. Get there on time, right? Man. That's huge. People really look at that. You coming in two minutes? Oh, just two minutes late. You're late. They just look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. You know, have some pride about you. Oops. Have some, <laughs> some decency about yourself. <laughs> have some decency about yourself. No, not, too much <laughs> not too much pride. But now, nah, man, uh, I want to kind of take a little new segment I want to do. Um, it's, it's not going to be too crazy. You know, we're going to ask a couple questions. Jay Jones know a few of them, but. The two of them, he don't know yet. So kind of cool. I, I don't forgot. That was about 3 p.m. That was before the Lakers yeah, game. I didn't, he got a premeditated answer over here, Shane. Like, he already I don't. Heard, huh? I swear. <laughs> the Lakers happened. When the Lakers gave up the 21-point lead, my brain went. <laughs> <over here. laughs> and y'all won, though. Y'all won, though. So y'all uh, straight. Next round. Brown, Brown, and AD, you know. Yeah. It was wild. But uh, all right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So my first one. What is your why? In, in in one sentence, what is your why? I just what question I would ask, or I just like what? Why do you do what you do? Why, why do, you, do you do what you do? Why are you on the path that you? What are? is your why? Why? Why do you? Why are you? Okay. So I'll go first. I go first. I I help you out. I help you out. So, okay. I got you. So my why is my daughter and my family. That's my why. Now that's my one sentence, and I I feel like I I went to I, I got too overzealous with one sentence because I want to talk about that. So uh, I want to say that's my why because I know it's my why because at the end of the day, um, all this stuff that we go through, you know, with the work issues, uh, society issues, you know, what I'm saying COVID things of that nature, racism, um, you know, it's, it is here. You know, we can't act like it ain't around. It is around. Um, it's getting better, you know, but it's around. Um, you know, mental health issues, because I battle stuff myself. Um, my family and my daughter, man, they they power me, bro. Like, it, it's like, I, I can't imagine 
you know, obviously Jesus Christ is, you know, at the center of my life too, but oh, yeah. I, I can't imagine what what type of drive I would have, if any at all, if I didn't have those people that push me every single day. So in my mind, that's my why. And I, and I kind of want to hear y'all's as well. My why, uh, similar to yours, is really, I was going to say, as you said, you know, God, you know, thanks for that. But on this earth, I will say, uh, my family. And then it's, at the end of the day, it's my, my me, me a little bit. Like, I, I it's going to sound proper, but I want people to, I want people to remember me. I kind of want to leave my stamp on this world. So I feel like when I wake up and when I, you know, go to work or when I talk to people or when I try to help out with the nonprofit organizations, why I do that is because I kind of want to leave a legacy kind of sort of like, I want people to remember me, but also my last name, which is my family. So, Yeah. I, 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 I feel like all three of us kind of coincide because the first thing I thought of was legacy. You know, I, I want to leave a, a prominent legacy to where people, people feel like I can, I can, nothing uh, prevents me from doing what I want to do because I seen him go through what he went through or even uh, I seen how much he wanted what he wanted and he got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not even just about me, like legacy involving like my kids, their kids, and so on. Like I want to be able to build generational wealth, just like we were speaking about, like for Chad Bozeman and, right. and Kobe. Like they were able to build generational wealth where their families shouldn't have to worry about uh, where their food is gonna come from or. Uh, what clothes they can put on their backs, anything like that. Even though Kobe dad was an NBA father anyway, but, but still that. just the he generational wealth that he was able to continue too. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, I would say legacy. My why is my legacy. I want to be able to leave something, something formidable where uh, people feel like, you know, he was a great man and he did what he could for him and uh, especially his family and especially his community. That point. Big facts, big facts. I like that. I like that. So um here's the next one. So when is the last time you made someone smile? How, and I we want to know about that little experience right there. So go ahead, Jay Jones. You go ahead, go first. Cause I, I know you didn't did it recently. So when the last time Today. you made someone smile? Today. Uh I had a, I, I have a friend, a lady friend, we just friend. Um, she likes roses. I knew this. And I was at uh Albertson's today. For some reason, I just wanted to get some green apples. I wanted some Granny Smith apples. But they had a sale on roses. And I was like, man, those are roses, you know, my homegirl said she liked. And I was like, man, it's a sale, whatever, you know. So I was like, hey, come out. I drove by her house. I said, uh, come outside. I got some for, you know, I usually might bring her a piece of candy or something, but, you know. And I was like, boom. Like, I like had it behind me. You know, I tried to be cool with it. Boom. And when she started, she was like, that's beautiful. And she smiled and stuff. I was like. It, you know, you know, I make you feel good when you make somebody else smile. But. Thanks, thanks. Shannon, you will go next. Yeah, I. Um, let me see. I, I would say, I would say the the last time I made someone smile, I have see, I have a a girl, so she, I have a girlfriend, so she, every day, you know, you always got to try to put a smile on your lady's <laughs> face. <right>. So <laughs> just. Us going to the casino today and just being able to to pay for everything and do do what I have to as a man in a relationship and, and make sure she's happy. I seen a smile on her face several times today, so that's something that also makes me happy as a man that I'm able to be in that position to do something like that. Right, that's solid. That's solid. That's solid. And uh, man, so on my front last time. I made someone smile, man. Uh, so not too long ago, I'm a trainer. <clears throat> so I was training the kid, and, uh, you know, we was out there getting into it. You know, when you train it, sometimes it gets a little crazy. You know, you, you get sweating, everybody hiding. You know, we grinding like that. And I was just like, man, I'm like, boy, you're running like, I, I don't know what I say. he's running like something. And it was that little crack little joke. 
And they yeah. just kind of broke that tension, you know what I'm saying? And he was just like, he was just having fun out there. And I love having fun with them kids, man, because it's like, you know, kids, they the light of the world, bro. Like, if we can impact these kids positively and, and show them good role models and things of that nature, I think it, it, it'll really help us moving forward. So that's the last time I made somebody smile. But uh, I appreciate y'all's input on that one. So I want to move to number three. And I want to say, uh, and I'll start with this one again. I think, or Shannon, it's your turn to start. So. What yeah. would you do um, for free in this world? Like, what type of gig, what type of career would you do for absolutely no money? Uh, you know what I mean? I know we need money, but if you ain't have to have money, what would you do for free? Like, what would be your gig for, like, that you would do for free? Mine would be music engineering, honestly. Like, as far as being an artist, I love being an artist, but... It's so much that you can fulfill with, with doing that. I feel like just hearing the music for me is very satisfying, especially when you know the starting product and then what, what comes out after it. Like once the engineer such as myself is able to, to, to mix and master it the correct way and know where the instruments go. And then, you know, as the listener, you know, many people, they just hear it for what it is, but they didn't hear the beginning of it. And I, I just love the before and after. So I would say anything that I, something that I would do without having to get paid for it would be music engineering. If I could do that all day, every day, I would. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, man, for me, what was something I'd do for free? Man, for free, I would do, I, I would do a mix of things. If I had to get paid and I had nothing that, you know what I'm saying, I needed to take care of, I would I would counsel. So I would do some type of consulting, counseling, you know, mental health. Cause I, lo- I really do love people helping people with mental health. I would do like a training piece and I would uh, train athletes um, and also just anybody that wanted training. And I think I would, I would bring that together. And that would be all I did is like help people with their holistic uh, body and mind, soul type of, of uh, training to be able to build better people. Like if I could do that for free, I, and, you know, just that would be, that would be something I would do for free and I'd do it forever. You know what I mean? So go ahead, Jay Jones, what would you do? <laughs> that, I mean, what did you say? Can I, I I'm trying to go second so I can say it. I was like, let me go second. No, nah, but for real, uh, I mean, we all know how I feel about football. I love football today. I love coaching, I love playing. But I think my real purpose calling is the counseling piece and the the mental health and the, the, the training, uh, just working out, just a lot, just basically overall health. You know, I would try to help this world with health, mental health, physical health, everything. Uh, I think it's so important because, I mean, I mean, it is important, but you got to be here. I think you need to be here and healthy to fulfill your purpose also. Yeah, I hit a lick on your goal, bro. My bad. I'm a, I didn't mean to do that. I had to though. I had to go. Sick. I knew. I ain't knew that was gonna happen. That's why I was like, let me go second. Let me go second. All right. I know. I was like, when Shannon <laughs> finished, when Shannon finished, I was like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. that's my purpose. Uh, uh, nah, nah, nah. All right, so I'm gonna go first on this one. Uh, I got two more. So one goal that you have, one goal that you have. So. uh I'm going to go first, man. <laughs> one goal that I have, man, one goal that I have is to, ah, man, I want to do an event in my hometown. I want to do an event in my hometown, Colleen. I want to do something for the kids, uh, something that can bring the kids together, bring something positive, um, just have a whole bunch of people around. You know, I just see hundreds of kids having a great time um, and learning good stuff. At like at least one event, you know what I'm saying? Just bringing them together in my hometown because uh, I think it's it's just something that I always wanted to do, man. So that's something I really, really will have as a goal. That's one thing. So uh, my goal, I'm actually working on it, is to own a business. I want to own a business. Then nobody can fire me, but then I can walk in and walk out, you know. But nah, but I want to be a business owner. Uh, collaboration with a lot of people, not just by myself. I want to have a great team around me. I want to own a business. Yeah, I I would definitely say for me, my ultimate goal is to have uh, have a, have a, a Whole Foods grocery store in the hood. Like I want to have 
it ain't even it don't even have to be a chain, but I want to have something to where it's a it's a it's an organic not even advertised that's organic because i know a lot of black folks get scared off by that word but it would be a whole foods grocery store in the hood where i grow my own food and my own crib you know have have me a, a farm and i'm able to uh transport it back and forth and you know this is all fresh it's all locally grown so that's something that i feel like I definitely will accomplish in the future, and uh, that, that's definitely something I, I, I've been having on my mind. That's huge because we need that. Because all they do, that's all they do, is put you know liquor stores and McDonald's, and McDonald's and stuff in the hood. So that would be, hey. And and folks eat. Folks don't uh, know like if you don't see it, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna be able to 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 get it. Like as far as. They'll have all those places say, uh, y'all know the whole food places they have, you know what I'm saying, like sprouts and stuff like mm-hmm. that. They have all that stuff in the suburbs as if we wouldn't eat it. But if you got a grocery store down the, uh, down the street and, you know, even if you feel like, okay, that's organic or whatever, whatever they sell, you got tomatoes and, and whatever in there, that, whatever you need when it comes to groceries, then you got that in, in the store. So, Anybody in the hood would go to it, and I feel like they just put the stuff in the hood that they wanted uh, over there, like a jack yeah. in a box or something like that. And and they they just feel like you know let them tear their bodies up with this type of uh, mess, but they don't have stuff to wear. Like it's you don't see no Chipotle in the hood, oh, and no. people in the hood got money for Chipotle, but we got to go to the suburbs for that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just little things like that. I really really would love some more more quality in our neighborhoods than, than what we have. No, that's substantial. That's substantial, bro, because, you know, with the, with the nutrients, just the nutrients that you're going to provide the hood, the mental health is going to skyrocket once you mm-hmm. do that. There's a reason why, you know what I'm saying, in the hood when you got McDonald's, you got Burger King, you got some fried chicken place around the corner, you got a liquor store, all this stuff is low-frequency food, low-frequency everything, bro. Like, so it's it's – your physical affects your mental, bro. Like it's like right. you're not you're not really cultivating your highest self, ingesting that stuff. You just you just not anybody that says you are is you're kidding yourself. You're not giving yourself the best chance to be successful. So I love that idea, bro. I love that goal. Oh, really, all right, that's big. I love that goal. But um, so here's the last one. This is for Jay Jones first. Finally, the most I'm influential fine. person in your life. And I didn't say your life. I said your life. Yo life. Yo life, bro. <laughs> Yo life. <laughs> Yo life. Yo life. <laughs> no. Uh, can we do two? Can we do like a family and then a non-family? Or just... Is most influential person in your life? My granddad, man. <laughs> granddad. 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 100%. He taught me everything. That's like you're supposed to tell a young person. He told me how to not cuss in front of women, how to do a resume, just everything. Uh, yeah, how to be funny, how to be confident in myself, how to not let others peer pressure me to do anything I want to do, and just love Jarrell, love who I am, and love my family, like everything. So, granddad. Right. I would say, for me, for me, it would be my mom, like just growing up around uh, around her, she, her being a single mom, it was like a real where I soaked up a lot of game that she told me. Like, it's, you you would have to, I heard the music that she was listening to. I listened to some of the music that she was listening to. Like some of her views shaped me as a person. My father, him being me being around him whenever I was around him, shaped me as a person and my uncle also I know you said person but uh, the biggest <laughs> the most influential, oh, you get it. Well, you got the most influential person would be my mom. You know what I'm saying? Okay, bet, bet, bet. And I, I man, you know what? If my mama catch this one, she gonna she gonna be mad boy. But I'm gonna go ahead and say my pops. <laughs> I'm gonna say my pops because as I sit here and think about it, man, like really my whole, you know, my adult life blueprint was laid down by my pops. Um, I really followed everything that he started and didn't finish. 
Um, and he's in, like you said, I picked up the music that he was listening to and that's the type of music I listen to. Uh, I picked up his tactics, uh, the way he kind of moved about and he, he showed me a lot through his example. Um, when I saw things, not necessarily what he told me because my pops, you know, uh, he wasn't like necessarily always the talking to you type, you know what I'm saying? He was just more so he would move. And when I would see it, I, I kind of, you know, he's my dad. So I emulated him. So, um, mm. Yeah, man. I say he's the most influential person. He just gave, 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 gave. And sometimes he didn't get what he gave in return. So that's why I feel like, personally, we talked about know your worth. You got to know your worth, bro. Like, you got to know what you got to know, what what what, what, you, what you out here giving, how much is really worth and go get that. So and it, shout out to my pops, though. Shout out to him. But, um, man, uh, we've been on this thing for shout a little bit. Shout out, Mr. Sloan. I got one more. Shout I got one Sloan. more. I got one more question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Great Daddy you, Jones. Joe Bear. <laughs> Joe Bear, my pet. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, before you, you know, go conclude with the show and everything, yeah, this yeah, man's yeah. an artist. He's a music artist, so uh, we yeah, gotta yeah. get, we gotta get your uh, play. You gotta, uh, you gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta let everybody know, Shanda, what's on the playlist these days? Because I, you, you give me a game, so you gotta give everybody else a game. What's on your playlist? What's the top? What you think? What you listening man. to these days? But besides that appetizer three, I would nope. say, I would say, I'm playing future heavy. You know, I, I I'm I've, I mess with future and Gucci a lot, so I'm listening to that high of life with future a lot. But I've been listening to a lot of currency. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Creep. You know, them about the three artists I probably listen to the most right about now. Future, Creed, and, uh, and Currency. That's they uh, recent tapes, yeah. Yeah, everybody try Creed, man. Just try them. I'm glad you said that, Shannon, because a lot of people, they, they they just don't even try them. But okay. New Creed, New Creed has let me down, though. I'm going to let y'all know Ooh. now. I'm going to let y'all know now. You, I'm going to let y'all know now. You, you don't like the last album? Nah, bro. Nah, and oh, I was the man. one. The one you got you know that song, Believe. That's a good one. Improve it's good. That's a good one. <laughs> the one he got with yeah, J. Cole okay. was good too, but the rest of the project, it was hard. It was because I, I personally, and me and Jay Jones are talk about, you know, we talk about music all the time, but I personally feel like Chris' music has kind of plateaued in the Mississippi style that he got. Like he ain't really changed it up for me. He can't, it like. Okay. The peak of Crick for me, Crick was really on his, like, like at the, uh, King Remember That Time? Mm-hmm. That was the peak. Yeah. That's one Ooh, of my that favorite ones. I love that project. How fast did he drop it? You said that's the peak? Oh, he's a gradual drop. It's a gradual okay. drop. Right. It ain't, but he used to, but bro, we was talking about Crick, like, next to J. Cole at one point. Like, it was like, yeah. hey, we can't now. He no, yeah, I get it. So well, Waka Waka said he the he the best he the greatest artist right now. Who for the new generation? Who said that? Waka Flocka. He said that in the interview or something like that. He said, the <laughs> he be- said who, who who the best yeah, artist? He said he the, he the greatest <laughs> of this generation. Boy, Waka Flocka better go get him a Rotten Tomatoes account. Boy, he playing. Hey. <laughs> <That's laughs> Stop playing with me. Hey, That's one more thing before we conclude. NFL starts Sunday. NFL starts. I see what your Falcons had. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, hold up, hold up. The, the Bears, <laughs> baby. Hold up. For a little bit, man. Man, get out of here. Dude. Hold up, hold up. Wait a second now. Uh, we trying to come for that bag. Look. You got, <laughs> hold up, hold up. Hey, my uh, boy, my boy, Um, yeah, I can't even think my boy, Todd Gurley. Yeah. Hey, he finna run that rock now. We ain't got to worry about getting healthy. stopped. He better stay healthy. Stay, stay, stay healthy. Eat the knees. He's right. Man. You know what I mean? Even me. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, bro. Hey, man. Right. Thank you, Shannon. It's been a great one, bro. Thank you so much. You know, being a, you know, being a light, we're going to have to get you back, bro. We're going to have to get you back. Most definitely, bro. Anytime. Got to get you back with your brother. We got to have that podcast going. We might, we might get the <laughs> brother's podcast thing going. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We might have to get that going for sure. But, uh, man, Jay Jones, it's another one, bro. Another one. That's a bet, man. Y'all be good, bro. Deserve.